Welcome to Okaloosa Eye on Crime, the show that gives you a chance to earn a cash reward of up to $1,000 through Emerald Coast Crime Stoppers for information about crimes or the location of wanted fugitives. Now, in this month's edition, we're going to uh, ask you if you know who stole a school bus from the school district and some other vehicles, if you know the whereabouts of a man who attacked a Good Samaritan, and who's in some of the great pictures we have capturing some crimes in action. So we're going to go straight to that and get started with some of the high-profile cases. First up, that school bus. Believe it or not, somebody took a school bus from from the school bus yard, Emerald Coast Crime Stoppers and the Fort Walton Beach Police Department are asking for information about that. There's some other vehicles taken as well overnight July 14th and 15th from an enclosed lot where they broke down the gate at the school district bus barn over on Lewis Turner Boulevard. Uh, taken in the burglary were also a 2008 Ford F-350, a 1997 white GMC long bed truck, the 2005 yellow international school bus, which is hard to uh, hide, and a black 32-foot uh, work trailer. Now, most of the vehicles have been recovered, but they still want to find out who's responsible for this. They found uh, these vehicles about a mile, I think, back in um, on Eglin Reservation. And we do want to also mention the Okaloosa County School Board is going to offer an additional reward um, on top of what Emerald Coast Crime Stoppers were offered for anybody that would have information about who actually took those vehicles. Yeah, so. and, and, the, and the other question would be that we want to know is why. Why, yeah, <laughs> and very interesting. Or what was the purpose? Uh, next up, the Crestview Police Department is currently investigating an armed robbery that occurred at the Walmart Supercenter uh, shortly after 4.30 p.m. on Sunday, July 24th. Now, a female victim advised that an unknown black male, who you can see here, uh, wearing a white tank top shirt, he had a knife and he robbed her and took her purse. She described him as a black male in his early, early 30s, weighing about 180 pounds. The suspect, fit, the suspect fled on foot and was last seen uh, entering a white 2000 to 2004 uh, Chevrolet Impala and was last seen driving towards Verdun Boulevard. Now, anybody with information about that Crestview robbery can contact the Crestview Police Department or, of course, anonymously, Emerald Coast Crime Stoppers at 863 TIPS. And you've got a good picture there, but uh, we Pretty don't have photo. the picture, unfortunately, in this one. But uh, they're looking for information about a rash of recent car burglaries. Imagine that. Co more car burglaries. These are along Racetrack Road in Fort Walton Beach, where several cars were burglarized at local automotive repair businesses during overnight hours. If you have any information, of course, you can text, you can email, you can call 863-TIPS uh, to let us know. But car burglaries continue to be a huge problem in Okaloosa County. And we always keep reminding people, lock your doors, take your valuables, put them out of sight. Right. And next up, Emerald Coast Crime Stoppers and the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office um, is asking for the public's assistance in the recent thefts of several backflow preventer valves. And this has become a real problem. We've had quite a rash of these lately. They're being stolen from locations. A lot of them have been in the western part of Okaloosa County. Of course, Santa Rosa County has had some as well and Fort Walton Beach. And I think we actually had one as recent as last night as well. So you can see the picture there. But the thieves are making off with that piece right there and possibly taking them to scrap yards. But, um... A lot, of, a lot of those thefts. Anybody with information, give us a call. And I'm glad we have a picture because most of the women out there like me are probably going, a what? what is a a backflow, backflow yes. preventer valve. Probably most of the men out there say, okay, I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, next up, we're looking for uh, someone who took a victim's wallet and then used the credit card at th uh, Tom, uh, Thumbs Up Stores, I'm sorry, the Thumbs Up Stores in Milligan on three occasions back on July 16th. Uh, they made several more attempts uh, to use the card on uh, Tom Thumb on James Lee Boulevard in South Ferdon. Suspects two white males and a white female with blonde hair. The uh, wallet was reported stolen from the parking lot of the Pick and Save in Baker around 4 o'clock on July 15th. And next up, the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office is, is investigating a reported home invasion robbery. A Fort Walton Beach area woman says two men broke into her Cove Drive home um, during the early morning hours of July 7th and demanded money and jewelry at gunpoint. Now, the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office received the call um, of the home invasion shortly before 1 a.m. Now, the victim says she came out of her bathroom and found two men inside her home yelling for money and jewelry. So, very scary. But if anybody has yeah. information about that, yeah. give us a call, 100% anonymous. And, and the lucky thing there, though, nobody was hurt. Nobody was hurt. Nobody was hurt in that one. Um, also, the Oklahoma County Sheriff's Office is looking for information about a grand theft that took uh, place at Regatta Bay Golf and Country Club. That's over at Regatta Bay Boulevard in Destin. Back on June 18th, the manager reported thousands of dollars worth of golf bags and clubs missing from the owner's storage room. No signs of four entry. So if you know anything about that, uh, the stealing of the golf clubs um, and equipment, then uh, we need you to get involved. 
Now, last month we told you how callers and web tips and, of course, tech tips, text tips um, to Emerald Coast Crime Stoppers helped shut down a couple of residential meth labs. And we asked Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office Lieutenant Mike Card to come on the show to talk to us a bit about all the different kinds of cases the Drug Task Force um, encounters. And, and first up, we'll say you guys typically are operating underneath the radar, uh, not typically out in front of the cameras until you get to a certain point in your career. Then they ask you to come on and, and all of a sudden be up front, talk about the things that are going on. But we've talked on the radio show um, recently about the resurgence in meth labs locally. There'd been kind of a lull. Uh, after it had been, you know, kind of spiked, yeah. then a lull. Now it seems like meth labs are, are making a comeback. What is up with that? What's happening that's making that happen around the county? Well, it happens in the county because actually things that happen globally impact citizens of Okaloosa County. You have the, uh, the state or the country of Mexico is no longer importing as much pure ephedrine as they used to from other countries such as India. And ephedra or pseudephedrine is the primary precursor that's needed to make methamphetamine. And Mexico, for a while, in their uh, illicit drug trade down there, they were making it lo vaster amounts, cheaper, mm -hmm. and in larger quantities, and it was better grade. So therefore, the people in the United States were no longer taking the risk of manufacturing it themselves. They were able to get a better product for a cheaper price. So Mexico was right, else. the supplying, and um, as yeah. it's better, cheaper. Yeah, the cartels in Mexico were making a better, cheaper, and better product for less money and less risk. However, when the, the president of Mexico has began curtailing the amount of pure ephedra that's being brought into the country, mm -hmm. the supply went down, the demand has continued to remain the same, the price has gone up, and that has uh, caused the resurgence of the small mom and pop methamphetamine labs that occur in our area as well. So now, why are these meth labs so dangerous and what should people look for if they suspect maybe a neighbor um, is has an active meth lab or even out of the back of a car? I know we've yeah. seen rolling meth labs too. So uh, Meth labs are so dangerous because a majority of the chemicals used to produce methamphetamine are carcinogens. They either cause cancer or they're flammables. Um, they're, um, anything in the process that's done incorrectly can cause explosions. Uh, breathing in the chemicals are harmful for you. They can cause um, blood disorders, liver disorders, uh, lung disorders, uh, they could kill you. Uh, the things to look for is any type of, you know, if you see a Coca-Cola bottle with obviously something in there that just doesn't belong, uh, it, it's likely, you know, you don't want to open these up, you don't want to you know, vent them, you don't want to smell anything that comes from them because just some people, even emergency workers, have been overcome by the toxic fumes that are coming out of it and re required to be hospitalized. So, I mean, if, if somebody's like, running an operation, is it going to be pretty obvious to people that are paying attention that there's something up in there? Or are these basically the kind of chemicals and things that you would just see sitting around in somebody's garage anyway? I mean, are there any kind of really red flags that you can point to? You can buy most of these uh, house, or they're common household chemicals. You can buy them at Walmart or any other retail store. It's how they're combined and put together is, um, is things that are notable. However, when you see people are stripping or breaking batteries apart, mm -hmm. or you see uh, Coke bottles with chemicals in them that just doesn't seem to be appropriate, mm -hmm. uh, or you notice a very strong odor or smell coming associated with, you know, just chemical smell right. that does not seem normal. It seemed like it should be coming more from a paint factory or something like that, and it's coming from a residential area. Those are the things you're going to look for. And I think the good point here, too, is, you know, with the people that had called into Crime Stoppers to help the Drug Task yes. Force and stuff locate some of these meth labs. I know you, you find out a lot of them on your own as well. But that these are a danger not just to the people right there in that little home that are going in and out around those chemicals, but it's a danger to people in the neighborhood. Right. Each, each gram of methamphetamine that's produced produces a, about two pounds of waste material. Wow. So for every small little gram that they're making, the chemicals that they have, they're either dumping it in their backyard, which then is then seeping into if you have a well, if you have sprinkler systems, um, plus it's just the, the toxic chemicals then are going to be airborne. If they catch on fire, if it seeps over into your property, there's a, and your children are exposed to it, there's a, a, a variety of problems that could be associated with and it. And the dangers of explosion that you had mentioned yes. too. Right. Well, another thing that I wanted to touch on is um, I know you guys, we put out the news releases all the time for the Drug Task Force with the, the cocaine distribution arrests, the indoor grows and marijuana um, distribution uh, folks that, that you find and put behind bars. But what about prescription drugs? That seems to be one of the new things that, that surfaced everywhere, not just here, but prescription drug abuse and then the sale of 
prescription drugs by sometimes people that don't realize that it's still a crime even though it's been something that's you know been given out by a doctor right um, and unfortunately a lot of people think that it's safe because it is a prescription drug however they still it's a lot of the times it's the opiates that they're looking for and it can cause respiratory failure cardiac failure it depresses your system so much that you pretty much kill yourself by taking them it's almost like a heroin overdose um, they are prescription pills so therefore people think they're safe that they're not going to hurt them that they're they're a better grade a better quality they know exactly what they're taking right. but it's not always necessarily the case um, around here our doctors are doing an, an, a real excellent job of monitoring what's going on mm -hmm. uh, th they don't refer to them you know the locally there are pain management clinics locally however it's the local people that seem to be traveling from Fort Walton Beach to Broward South County Florida. to Orlando mm -hmm. or these other communities when they're passing all the pain management clinics that we have available locally we have probably hundreds of pain management clinics between here and that location that if they had a legitimate problem that they could easily seek medical help right. there and they're choosing to avoid those because they're going to get it where they know someone is going to prescribe them and give them what they but want. They have the pill the larger amount that are, right. that are yes. doing and then they transport it back to this area and like I said the doctors in this area are doing an excellent job it's some of the other areas that there seems to be a problem mm -hmm. with and then when they but when they bring those pills back to our community they're now selling those pills. What's the scope of the problem here? I mean, how significant is it? Is it's, it a, it's a significant problem. It is a big um, deal. There in the panhandle alone last year, I believe there was over 26 accidental overdoses that wow. resulted in death. That will put it in perspective that quickly. Will. And now the sheriff's office has actually started a new program to help people get their um, unwanted or unused or expired drugs uh, back or disposed of safely. Now citizens, in fact, asked for this, and so the sheriff has actually decided that um, he's put a new program in place. Can you tell us how that set up the drug take back program and how people can take advantage of that? Yes, we partnered with the DEA last year and we collected hundreds of pounds of pills in a four hour period from Okaloosa County residents. Um, but it's only offered one day a year. And there, are, you know, there have several people that, you know, their uh, prescriptions and other medications expire regularly. And they are learning, you know, through the EPA and other people that it's not safe to just throw them away. It's not or safe. Or flush them down the toilet. Or flush them down the toilet. To because they, they've seen so many uh, streams across America are now polluted with human medications. So to keep that from happening, the sheriff instituted a program which is similar to the DEA program, mm -hmm. um, but it's now available year round rather than just simply one day a year. If citizens take their expired medications to any of the substations, the sheriff's office, notify a deputy will respond, they'll inventory what it is that they want to turn in, it gets submitted to our evidence department, we get a court order and all of that is disposed of and taken care of properly. And the beauty of that too is that you're taking it off the streets where it's available, where there might be people that have it sitting around their house that don't think that much about it, but someone else will come into the house in to steal, steal it. Yes. You have burglaries. Or a where juvenile gets a hold of it. Sure, a juvenile gets a hold of it or people come in and burglarize homes looking specifically for prescription medications. Right, and if they're old and they're expired and people don't know what to do with them anyway and they're mm -hmm. just one uh, some place to get rid of them and there are even p times with around uh, nursing homes and everything where we've had information where um, some vagrant type people will actually dig through the trash cans looking for medication that's wow. been thrown away. Right, right, right. Well, I can just vouch for the fact with all the news releases that I put out for the Drug Task Force that you all are doing a fantastic job out there. Like I said, obviously operating under the radar a lot of times, it is undercover work. People don't always know because you can't always promote what you're doing until you make some of these really significant drug busts that we see. So, you know, on behalf of everybody out there, you guys are doing a good job and I appreciate the fact that you came on to, to try and share some of what you're doing with the public so that they are aware of it. And now we're going to go and check down some of the fugitives that we've got, some more folks that are on the run that we're trying to capture. So we'll go down the first list now.